Hey guys, time for another episode of Day in the Life of Vintage Classic Specialist. So let's hop in and talk about what happened today. So Rafa mostly worked on the 71 Gia today. Let me show you what he did. Well, since we're standing right here, um, the top dash pad went on and it looks amazing. Um, we're waiting on these little vent covers that should be here hopefully tomorrow. And then uh, once we install those, then we'll probably go ahead and um, put the windshield in this thing. But uh, let's look in here a little bit. So yeah, I am completely in love with this dash on this early Gia, or excuse me, on this late Gia. Um, I didn't really think that I liked these until I've seen this one where everything is, is new or refurbished. It just looks amazing. Usually... You see these with the, the faux wood on them and they're all old and crusty looking. I, I don't know that I've ever really looked at one that's been freshly restored before, but they just look amazing. And that radio, just perfect, goes well, very well with everything. And um, yeah, it's just a beautiful dash. This, this has got to be one of the most beautiful dashes to ever come out of Volkswagen. So yeah, Rafa put the, uh, the top pad on today. The bottom one, the knee guard was on, but uh, I think it was just kind of loose, so he finished kind of mounting that up. Uh, let's go on the other side of the dash and look at what he did. So he also put in the complete windshield wiper assembly, at least all the under dash part. We still have to put the, the wipers, uh, arms and so on, on, but there's probably no hurry until the windshield goes on for those anyway, they'd just be in the way. Uh, he did that. He installed the actual uh, glove box here. It's an original, one of the ones made out of kind of cardboard or paper, whatever you call that stuff. And let's see, so that's all installed. He installed the latch for the front hood so you can see the tube running there. It runs from basically from the glove box up to the front. And then he installed the actual latch here that gets riveted in on these late cars. And we'd previously had this zinc plated uh, with gold. It looks really slick. Uh, and since we're standing right here, this also happened today. So the original badge, he installed that, cleaned it up a lot. Uh, the seal, he believe it or not, he actually made that seal from some other, I don't know what kind of seal it was, but he kind of cut an old seal, or not an old seal, but a seal that we had in stock, cut it up and sliced it and diced it and pretty much made a really nice seal for it and it looks great so yeah front of this car is really coming along uh once the headlights go on it's gonna look amazing and then obviously the bumpers and so on so i think that is about it for rafa today just really focused on this car kind of finishing up the the hood side of the under dash area and then the the in car area of the dash you know the pad and upper and lower pads so really really happy with how this is coming out i think the owner is going to love it so let's talk about what i did um so i spent a little bit of time this morning on the 61 bus its twin brother is still gone getting its interior installed but this one uh, i went and I bought the uh, the bullet turn signal lenses. The owner, I think it previously was saying he had some NOS ones or something. And uh, finally uh, he said, you know what, just go ahead and buy these. So I got these from Wolfsburg West. They're really nice German reproductions. They, they look great. So yeah, so those and the, the complete bullet assemblies went on today. Uh, the nose emblem I had put on yesterday, what else? Uh, just another very small thing, the wiper motor, which I had kind of refurbished all the parts for it. I pretty much put it together today as far as putting the, the cover on the motor with the seal, started putting the arms on it. Um, but what we realized was, was that we weren't 100% sure if the owner wanted to install Safari windows on this bus or not because there's some things that need to be welded on the uh, the pillars here for Safaris that it doesn't have. And so I called him and asked him and he said, yes, let's put Safaris on it. 
Uh, he was going to try and find some original ones. If not, we'll get some nice reproduction ones and they'll go on. Um, the reason I bring that up now is because the wiper shafts are specific if you're running um, safaris or not, because again, they can kind of fold out and go on the uh, the one-eyed duck, my favorite car part name uh, right here that holds them when they're in the folded down position. So yeah, obviously we don't want to install all that stuff if he was going to go with fixed front windows. But yes, he said for sure we're doing safaris. It's just a matter of whether he finds some original ones or we're going with reproductions. And once he gives me that bit of information, then we'll we'll move forward. So that's about it for this bus for today. So let's see, I did also work on the Prairie Beige Beetle a little bit today and pretty much finished up its interior. So the owner had brought by the glove box, or excuse me, the ashtrays. He was short both ashtrays. Those of you that follow probably heard me talk about the story. When he was having some paint matching done, the shop that matched the paint actually lost that ashtray, which is the piece they were using to match the paint. Um, so he had to buy a whole new one. And then the rear one, which goes on the passenger side uh, right there, he didn't have that one. So he found a nice one, I don't know, on Samba or something. So I installed that, uh, which in turn allowed me to go ahead and install that panel right there and then boom once that was in then the rest of the interior could finally go in so uh, look at this back seat it's just gorgeous actually i mean the whole interior is but it's really nice to see this car finally with the back seat installed and so i did that i installed the uh, the rubber floor mats and then his battery is installed with the correct clamp and the little I don't know if you can see here. Eh. The cover on the battery, everything, it's all legit. So yeah, the interior of this car is pretty much done. Actually, the whole car is pretty much done. So at this point, probably in the next um, in the next day or two, I'm going to fire this car up, maybe take it for a little test drive. And I think it's going to be ready to get back to the owner. We're going to have a guy that we use come out and uh, color sand the car and buff it, probably ceramic coat it. The owner already said, uh, go ahead and do that so we can deliver it to him really nice. And yeah, it's been at our shop for quite a while, but he's going to be very happy. I think when he gets it back and everything is super nice, everything's very correct. Lots of very correct details on this car. For those of you that are maybe new to the channel and haven't seen the motor for this one. Let's show it off here. So there's the motor. This is one that we did. So yeah, I mean, it's literally a piece of art. I love the way these motors look when they're nicely restored. All the correct parts and so on, it's beautiful. So yeah, super nice car, this 57 Prairie Beige Oval. So those things happened on this one today, and then move on to the back of this car, the 71 Ghia. I actually did a few things. In preparation for putting its motor in, I went ahead and installed the engine compartment seals. So there's the front one and the, and the rear one here. They went in actually pretty easy because the, the channels were nice. And then I installed the throwout bearing, and I connected the clutch cable. And then I installed the complete pedal assembly. Again, usually we have these rebuilt by Scott at Pedalworks. Does a really nice job. So got that all bolted in and connected. Uh, that's about it for me. So yeah, pretty productive day in the shop. Really keeping these cars moving forward and having fun doing it. What's not to love about that? So that is it for today, guys. We will see you again tomorrow. Thanks for watching.